So this video is about trying to simulate the central limit theorem that we're discussing in this class in R for yourself. So the first step, I think, is to just generate some data. So I'm going to store my, my data in a variable named, I'm picking capital X this time just to remind us that capital letters are supposed to represent random variables. And random variables have distributions. Most of them often do, but there are times they don't. But in this case, they do. And functions of random variables have distributions because functions of random variables are random variables themselves. So we're going to use the capital letter here to remind us that the mean has a distribution. And the central limit theorem here is telling us the shape of the distribution of the mean. OK, so capital letters it is. You all are to pick a distribution to sample data from. I'm just going to pick the gamma distribution because I think it's a fun example. And I'm going to say we want, let's start with 301. I'm just kind of making it up. Observations, so our sample size is 301. From a gamma distribution with a shape of, oh, I don't know, 40 and a rate of, I don't know, uh, 2. So shape equals A and rate equals B. Now what we should do is calculate the mean of that vector of data. So now we have a vector of data named capital X. The vector has length 301. And the mean of that vector is roughly 20, fairly close to A over B. Indeed, as the estimate from data alone is supposed to estimate the expectation. If you don't know where I got this, just Google it on uh, and pull up the Wikipedia page for the shape and rate variation of the gamma distribution. Now, the only thing we need to really change here is to somehow repeat this process, capital R times. So all I'm going to do is say that I have 503 friends. And I want to do this entire process 503 times. So I've run this code just a few more times just to make sure I've got it all down. And here's what I'm going to do in order to replicate, that is just repeat this code. I'm going to use the function replicate that takes the first argument r to tell you how many times you want to repeat the following expression. And then I'm just going to collapse this down into one line of code. So I'm going to call the mean. Now I'm going to try to use um, spaces here to help your eye see the parentheses going on in this calculation. So then I'm just going to take whatever uh, bit of code I use to generate some data, and I'm just going to plug that into mean, just as R is doing for us with the variable x. OK, so if I run that line of code, what you see is R, capital R, sample means each one of which came from the gamma distribution with 301 observations within each mean, a rate of A and a, a shape of A and a rate of B. It's hard to see there is 503 of these, but indeed this 498 says here is your 498th element, 99th, 500th, 1, 2, and 501. Now, the thing to notice that is that all of the means are really close to 40 over 2, 20, because each mean is an estimate of the expectation A over B. So all we really have to do here is make a histogram. Here, let's stop doing too many parentheses, and we'll break up the code into multiple um, variables, and I think that helps the eye read what's going on. So all we're going to do is run this line of code again, store it into a vector named sample means, because the vector names what it holds, and then make a histogram 
using breaks equals FD. This is not necessary, but I like it because uh, F. Friedman and D. Diaconis are two mathematicians from California. Um, and here is a histogram that I hope you see that is approximately normal. It's um, got this kind of nice, almost symmetric shape to it, even though there's a few little asymmetries here. And it's centered at A over B indeed, just like it should be. So now the key takeaway is it doesn't matter which distribution you sample from here or here, what you're going to get from the histogram of sample means indeed looks nearly normal, especially as these numbers n and r get bigger, this is going to look more and more normal. So we could repeat this process all over again by just creating bigger sample sizes and claiming you have more friends. And indeed, the sampling distribution we get out is normal. Now remember, this week is a lot about e exploration on your own. So what you should do is pick either a different distribution to sample from. Okay, let's get rid of this. Either a different distribution to sample from right here. Or you should pick at least pick different values for the shape and rates. But uh, you're going to be hard pressed to find a distribution that this theorem doesn't hold. And that's the fun part about statistics. That's what makes statistics so applicable is that this normal distribution is predictable.